Next up, we're going to be um, looking some, looking at some examples of classifying these ODEs. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and use a couple different notations when we do this, just to get you more familiar with the different types you might see. Um, so maybe real quick note, you could write a derivative like this or like this. or like that, um, and this is going to be prime notation, dot notation, or um, differential notation. All of them are fine. Uh, in class, I think we will usually use prime notation unless differential notation makes it a bit clearer to see, but for these different examples, we're just going to sort of use all of them in case it's been a while since you've seen any of them. So if we have the differential equation u triple prime minus u prime equal to zero, this is going to be um, a third order equation. So I looked and I saw what's the highest order derivative. It's this one, a third order derivative. Um, so this must be a third order equation. Mm, maybe I can do like little different colors to kind of tell you where each thing came from when we're looking at it later. Um, so it's a third order equation. It's homogeneous. So the way you check that is, um, when you have all of the derivatives and u on one side of the equation, so that's over on the left-hand side here, then if zero is left over on the right-hand side, it's homogeneous. And then um, the last thing that we learned how to classify is whether or not it's linear. So this is a linear equation, and the way you check that is you look at what's attached to all the derivatives. So there's, oh no, I already used that style um, with the little stars, I guess. The thing that's attached to all the derivatives is one that isn't u or any of its derivatives. So I know that this is linear. Um, if I wanted to write an example that was nonlinear, maybe I could have u times u triple prime minus one over u u prime um, plus the square root of u. That's a lot of different ways that that you could um, multiply u and its derivatives together. That would be nonlinear. Um, let's say I wanted to make it so that it was non-homogeneous. Then I could still have that u triple prime minus u prime, but I would have it equal to x squared plus 7. Now, u and all its derivatives are on one side of the equation, but there's something that's not 0 left over. There's um, a function of x, so that's a non-homogeneous equation. And we'll do a couple more examples just to build more intuition, but I'll go a bit more quickly through these. I won't do the different color coding. Hopefully we have a, a good feeling for um, where all the different parts came from now. Um, so for example, u du dx equal to zero. So um, I see one derivative, so that's first order. Um, I see nothing on the right-hand side, so it's homogeneous still. Um, but now I have that mixing between u and its derivative, so I know that this is nonlinear. We'll do, let's see. du dx minus 3e to the 2x equal to 0. And I want to classify that. So again, I have um, highest derivative is du dx. So this is a first order equation. And I don't have that u times du dx or anything weird like square root u. So I know that this is a linear equation. 
Um, but now the um, non-homogeneous part takes a little bit more work to see. So I have this thing on the left-hand side that isn't u or one of its derivatives. And I need to make that call about homogeneity isolate u and all its derivatives on one side and everything else on the other side. So I have to move that 3e e to the 2x over to the other side. And now I can see there's something that's not 0 when I isolate u and its derivatives. So this is a non-homogeneous equation. And let's do, I guess, one more. Um, let's say I've got d2u dx squared is equal to u du dx plus sine of x. And um, let's see. So before I move anything around, I know that this is second order because I have that second order derivative. And um, I can see that it's nonlinear because I have this u du dx term. And then again, when I do that thing where I uh, move u and all its derivatives to one side, I have this leftover sine of x. And so it's again non-homogeneous. Um, so hopefully you have a feeling for what those different words mean. You'll um, classify these different um, types of equations. Um, I guess real quick I could show you an example of a partial differential equation. Would be um, du dx squared plus d, oops, d2u dx squared plus d2u dy squared is equal to um, x squared plus y squared, I guess. Um, so it's second order, partial differential equation. Um, it's linear and non-homogeneous. So all the same classifications work, they just have mixed derivatives, or um, sorry, partial derivatives in them with respect to different variables. And the reason why we spend so much time on all this classification is that they're gonna be important later. So I know right now I'm just throwing a lot of vocabulary at you and asking you to learn it. Um, what's going to happen is that we will learn methods to solve a lot, um, many ODEs, but um, linearity, homogeneity, and order are some of the big determinants in when you can use them. There are a couple other things that will come up, but um, those are the big three. And you need to be able to identify those things to know whether or not you can solve a particular um, differential equation using one of these methods. So that's why we cover that. I'm going to stop again right here. Next up, we're going to move into that second part of what I wanted to cover, um, initial value problems. So click on through for the next video whenever you're ready to cover.